Hey guys, this is the show, and uh, this is DJ Duck on Demon. Oh, it's not, it's Mackerel. <laughs> I'm so conditioned! This is the artist formerly known as DJ Duck on Demon, who in real life, oh, we've been telling you. We're two different people, I'm Chelsea. Sorry. I don't okay. look. Real quick up top. I'm sorry. I, DJ Duck on Demon couldn't be here I'm tonight, so sorry. I hope, because he's haunting the fuck out of some racists. Sure. Yes! <laughs> Um, so I'm filling in. I'm filling in. Uh, and hello. Hi. So this is uh, DJ Duck and Dem Demons fill in Matthew uh, W. Crawl. I don't actually know your middle name. And this is <laughs> Cash Neal. Yeah, sure. uh, the lovely and talented. And if you guys missed the concert he just did on Facebook, he does a weekly concert at 7.30 p.m. on his Facebook page every week. And he just gave an incredible impassioned really beautiful uh said some words and That's it was nice. great nice. and you play wonderfully so tash Neal is here he has to be here because he lives here <laughs> uh, matthew carl is here because he's a wonderful person and good friends of dj duck and demon who is doing his part oh. as a white demon and haunting uh other racists or just racist well we're all we're yeah, all we're say. all racist i mean yeah. on some level so we can assume DJ Duck and Demon is a little bit racist. Um, so yeah, and we, I just wanted to use, since we gather here and do this for an hour every week, it felt weird. We thought about just not doing it, and I was like, well, why would we do that? If we do this every week, we should just use this hour to continue the conversation about racism in America and uh, the fact that a white supremacist is president, and he thinks it should be legal to execute black people in the streets. So let's start there. <laughs> Thoughts? <laughs> So, you guys, I hope you comment. I'd love anybody to call in if they have things they want to talk about. I'm thinking of this as just like whatever we want to, we want to talk about, special with a special, the special focus on uh, the the infuriating things we've seen some of our friends and family who are revealing themselves as not on the right side of humanity saying and the fact that they want to make racism like two pronged you know what I'm saying like people want there to be two sides to racism and I thought we could just use this as like a catharsis and uh, to just say what we're feeling and just like talk it out in real life those things like when you're commenting on your racist uncle's Facebook post and you're like looking around like Whoa, why is anyone on my back on this I wish I could talk to someone let's just like do that right now yeah. you know what I mean yes. I mean step one don't go on Facebook. I mean well I have not uh, been on pa Facebook fa for a really long time but I did feel like which actually brings me to my number one point Matthew Crawl. great segue okay. I've been uh, going on it more and trying to post because I feel like on Instagram, I'm a little bit talking into a vacuum. And I feel like on Facebook, sure. I have more, I'm connected to more people of different, again, not to say, let's, racism is not a political issue, nor is it a two pronged, two sides issue, but people still somehow seem to think it is. And those people, I feel like I'm connected to them on Facebook. And so I feel like that's where it's sure. beneficial to post. But then also... It's your racism portal. It's a racism <laughs> platform. Certainly is because we also no, no, know... My, portal. My, it's a portal. <laughs> it's a portal straight racism. into racism. Uh, it's just right there listen, for all of us. When, when convicted child murderer Mark Zuckerberg says that you can say anything you want on uh, his platform... No. Then I say we just talk about convicted uh, sex offender Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah, he mean, I just realized uh, I had just a dirty <laughs> tissue sitting next to me for the whole thing. This oh, is a this isn't a <laughs> some sort of like great just um, analogy for for our democracy right now and our government. Just a sad dirty tissue laying here. Um, I cut you off for my stupid joke, Chelsea. You said you've been actually doing, trying to do good work over on Facebook, well, like actually engaging with people that are not in uh, your bubble per se. Yes, and please, I mean, everyone also, if you guys want to like comment or, um, oh, George White, my dad asked how we feel about President Obama's comments. So we'll take that question in just a minute. And if anybody wants to call in just to be like, yo, my aunt who doesn't think she's racist because she doesn't wear a KKK hood, but does like, you you know covert racism and doesn't want to believe it said this on Facebook and I just want to vent about it like comment that or if you have my number 
uh, text But she wears me. the shoes. She... It's so weird. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get it all out. But to your question, and I would love to hear, obviously, everyone, your thoughts, obviously, Tash, on this. Like, I, I've been trying to uh, post information not just like my thoughts of like how I'm feeling, which is also fine or live your life however you want to live it. I've been specifically trying to just like p- put short articles, especially other, you know, articles written by black authors or, you know, encouraging people to follow, um, you know, some of them like Rachel Cargill comes to mind. She's one of my favorites. She's a lecturer activist, just this amazing black woman who is doing all the work, white people that we should have been fucking doing. She's doing it for us. Bless her heart. And you can Venmo her and follow her for all the work she does. Follow her at, at Rachel.Cargill. But um, I've been trying to just like ke- show people how I f- feel who might not understand that racism doesn't have two sides on Facebook because maybe I've never had an explicit conversation with them about it before. And if they see, if they, if their feed is flooded with enough people explaining (laughs) what's not complicated that is going on in the world right now, that, you know, uh, black people shouldn't be murdered by police officers, that maybe if they see enough people, then maybe they'll, they could begin to question their, why, you know, their, feelings and and come to terms with the fact that they're racist and we're all raised to be racist in America and so even though I don't I don't think know if I'm necessarily adding anything of value to the conversation but I'm just trying to keep anytime I read an article that I found useful I try to put it out there and I've seen a lot of people uh, my white friends posting I just don't know what to post and people are getting on my case about being silent, but like, I, it's not my experience and I'm trying to listen and what could I just post anything, just literally post it's fucked up what's happening in the world. And I don't know what to say, post that, you know, it's like, and don't be afraid to then have somebody say here, let me correct you on what you posted because then that's how you will expose your own biases that you didn't know you had. I've been talking a long time. What do you think, Josh? That's oh, completely true. I don't think anybody would yell at you for saying this is a messed up situation. If anybody's going to argue with you or attack you for saying racism is bad, you need to examine that person. I'm right. not saying that to anybody that says, you know, or is trying to point them gently in a direction that says murdering innocent people is bad based on the color of their skin. Right. You know, if right. they have things... If they get more sensitive or defensive about, even if they haven't, because a lot of times people will say, I don't know what to say, or I feel like people will jump on my case, and you'll look through the feed and notice they haven't said anything at all. Yeah. And they're already pre-defensive, and they're waiting for somebody to jump on their neck, or they're waiting for somebody to have the wrong and negative reaction, or, well, see, I just opened my mouth, now I'm racist, you know, that kind of thing. Right. That leads to more silence, which leads to more complicity. Um, that sort yeah. of victimization of oneself is not helpful. Um, you know, that's yeah. like, if I'm, we, ha- we always, not to compare, but you wouldn't say that to any other crime, you know, especially yes. not murder, but any lesser crime where people get to walk away, away with their lives. If we're talking about a violent crime that happened, you wouldn't go, you know, it, 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 there wouldn't be two sides to it. Right. That's There's not two sides to school shootings, right? Exactly, right. School shootings aren't, well, I suppose people. I was going to say school shootings aren't political. The the guns people want to well, politicize. Well, they're made political, but they're the made, act not, of a school the shooting, act of the school is, shooting not is not political. Yeah. And the, the act of the school shooting is never portrayed as political. It's the what can we do about it and the right. gun ownership that's politicized. But so then, why then is a videotape mm. of a man being murdered while well, bystanders watch and yell? Stop murdering him. Mm-hmm. Why is that politicized? I mean, we know the answer: racism. Right. I'm well, saying right. that to in terms of like, right. what, what? Pose the question to your your aunt who doesn't think she's racist, but is super upset she can't get a haircut, but doesn't seem to be upset <laughs> that right. a black man was murdered, murdered on camera. On camera, ex- executed by the police that she probably loves and right. defends. Right. I mean, I feel like a lot of that. It's just frustrating to watch um, that uh, just that in of itself is that right. there's these aunts up here that you know I don't, I don't know what it 
this, but I, I, a lot of times, a lot of times, and I've learned this recently, especially post 2016, when things like look and sound simple, they are. Right. And if it comes a little bit too complicated, you have to ask yourself why, the answer is usually racism yeah. or sexism or any sort of ism. Because if it doesn't make well, because, sense, it doesn't make sense. Yeah, right. and people are trying to, I mean, what, hmm. I, I've gone into a lot of the discussions with people, and I, I, I keep coming back to sort of, I, I kind of piggybacking off what you just said, Tash. People want simple. Mm -hmm. Yes. And sadly, even though our society from a even technological standpoint or something along those lines has tried to sort of like make it simple, life's just not simple. It's not binary. It's not anything like that. And I, I, I go back to the idea of uh, the concept of person, smart, mm. people, stupid. And we get in, we are all uh, in this country, in the United States of America, um, conditioned to think specific ways, whether we think we are or not. Yes, racism um, was I indoctrinated mean, into us. It's literally, literally everything, everything cult. from, and, and I've said this a little bit before too, about even, let's even t take it to a, let's sidestep for a moment. The Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. However you feel about this country one way or the other, f forcing children to recite the Pledge of Allegiance is a form of indoctrination. Yes. Objectively, true. That's what it is. And you can't really argue again. Like, no one can really, like, you can say, you could argue, like, the benefit or not. But, like, it on that same level, racism uh, has been... Uh, indoctrinated into into all of us in one way or another uh, throughout our times as Americans born at here and in the in, yes. in the education system. Uh, okay, so I work on um, I work on a history channel on YouTube, and we we um, and I'm I'm constantly amazed. I've been doing it for two years. I'm constantly amazed at how utterly the education system that I came up in failed me mm. about Amen. literally everything of course racism of course like no one's teaching me no one in, in in rural new hampshire no one taught me about like the 1866 new orleans massacre right. like no tulsa one taught me about this or, or, or tulsa or... or any of this and like uh and it's all this sort of you know it's so funny too and sorry this i, I keep going on 19 different yeah, tangents yeah, with even the covid stuff okay conversation with the covid stuff there's discussion about how after the 1918 flu pandemic, it was so culturally to the culture, like the, the actual like world psyche, whatever, you know, the, the, the oeuvre, the, the, the whatever, the, the global feeling. It was so damaging to us as a species that a ton of places, the U.S. included, just kind of stopped talking about it once it was over. Right. And what happens when you do that with something like a disease, like racism, which could also be classified as a disease, sure. you you start to, you, you can't learn the lessons that you need to learn from the horrible shit that's happened. Yep. And now even with COVID, like we're at, like the way that the cultural zeitgeist has sort of gone with it, 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 it's, people aren't ready for it because we ignored the idea that these things happen. It's all, it, it's all this sort of, and it, in the case of racism, it's 100% a form of uh, white fragility. It's a form of like not being able to parse the fact that, you know, yeah, people are in places of privilege. I come from one, uh, you know, it's... it's people but, take offense to that because everybody wants to believe the the code whiteness code is like the belief that pull we pulled bootstraps. ourselves up by our bootstraps and you i did this i didn't get a hand i didn't get a hand i pulled myself up and we're so I wait poor can, white guy. can i actually use that <laughs> as a segue <laughs> to this so tash well, t tell us, I want to show that little Oprah clip. Oh, Do you yeah. want to tell us, give us the, the top line about Jane Elliott? Yes. If you well, haven't heard about well, Jane I Elliott. Gonna, I was yeah. always going to say, it's, uh, actually, that was a beautiful analogy to the, 
bringing up COVID because it is exactly a disease and the educational system worked exactly how it was supposed to work. Yep. They're supposed to make, um, you know, young white, especially males feel superior. Mm -hmm. And as long as you are ignorant to, you know, facts that might make you feel as a human being less superior, then you maintain that superiority complex. And anything that attacks yeah. that idea, that's where that defensiveness, defensiveness comes from. Like, damaged property, no, rather than yeah. watching a person get murdered in the street. Um, I feel like it's beautiful, yeah. The fact that we ignored a pandemic in 1918 and happened to fire the pandemic response team, and now we're screwed a little bit. So how, did a little bit. how are we here? What, who bit. could think? Um, who would have possibly known? Um, there's no way to know these things. But again, it's like if you're <laughs> if you're hanging out with Christopher Columbus at the time, watching him rape people and pillage and murder, it's a little hard to think he's a hero as opposed to hundreds of years later and your teacher's telling you as a kid, this guy discovered things. You know, it's it's a little different. Columbus. Yeah. Fuck. It's not stealing when you discover. Just discovering stuff. Hanging out with him somehow like humanized me more than anything ever has. Just the way you were like you're hanging out with them. I suddenly like put Christopher Columbus as a human being. Like we're having a drink. I'm like, oh yeah. Seems gross, right? What a monster. <laughs> Terrible person. I cannot. Just chilling with I cannot believe that Columbus still has statues. And I get. I get. Over here. I get like. I get like. I don't know. It's so funny because a lot of times. Uh, sorry, I'm tangenting no, again. God, but like with the Columbus <laughs> thing, it's like, oh well, like that's sort of an Italian uh, pride thing. It's like, well, it shouldn't no, be. Sorry. Like, there's a lot of great. The accomplishments the, the right. This is, this Why is are you shitting on your Italian <laughs> heritage by honoring Italians accepting their white? Italians right. used to uh, be the N word when they emigrated here when they first got here. Yeah. After a hundred couple of decades, they were like, "Oh, you guys are white. It's cool. Let's get some Godfather videos out here. Mm -hmm. Let's let's love the culture." Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did a little bit what they did with us with the rap and all this mm -hmm. fetishize the uh, mob and all that. Right. And now they're. They're in the fold. Columbus, we're going to give you Columbus Day. We're going to give you that Columbus Day, make you part of the whiteness, a whole day. This is the guy that you love. Why do they pick? I could think of 10 dope Italians right now that are better than Christopher Columbus. I don't know why they're riding with this guy. But my dad. <laughs> he should you. have a day. <laughs> Dr. George White. He's That's half. It. He's great. He's half Italian, half like the whitest white man. Like on my dad's side, I could be a registered daughter of the revolution or whatever. Mayflower. Like it goes back to the like people who invented racism. But I would rather Thanks. he have a day. Yeah. <laughs> he hadn't. Uh, George White should have a day. But yeah, so Jane Elliott, that great quote, she was saying that uh, essentially if you aren't, you know, prejudiced or racist, the education system hasn't done its job. That has failed you. Surprise! You're not yeah. racist. Sorry, Surprise. buddy. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, believe me. There's, there's a lot. Uh, I mean, I have, I have <laughs> thoughts about this and also other things about the education system. Uh, and, and I forget if I've even ranted to any of you guys about this, but no. like, even to the point of, and this. No, you know what? You know what's so funny? This actually also ties back to racism. Doesn't it all? It's always us. It, it. Racism the, is like the Kevin Bacon of oh human, human. Oh man, six degrees of the education system's racist. Um, but like the 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 U.S. education system, at least again where I was, and I can only speak to where I went to school, did nothing to prepare you, a human being, to not be dependent intrinsically on the system. And now Sorry. there's a that that. There's things that society, of course, does and, and benefits, obviously, humans working together in a sense. You make a community, and that's a good thing, and there's lots of things. But I'm talking about things like financial responsibility. My parents oh. happened to teach me that. School didn't. School never taught me how to balance a checkbook a or manage point. credit or what I would need to get a car or to do any that. of the things that, like, life required. Yeah. So that, even on that level, mm -hmm. that is a, a, a way of sort of keeping mm -hmm. uh, it... it basically populations ignorant about a thing just like we described you know uh, either ignorant or actually attach what you said about um it did its job because its job was to condition and misinform especially about like the the ideas of like hiding all of the bad shit that white, white people, people do yeah, which that's all of it yeah is insane like, put that right there. because there's so much <laughs> <laughs> 
And we learned like, about almost some... none of it. And it's most and of some... it. That's some David Blaine mind freak it level. Is. Uh, it's, uh, it's brilliant. It, it's insane. It's but insane. It's, uh, also, it's and not. I mean, not to get too macabre, but on some real. Get macabre. Uh, Officer Chauvin, he murdered one man. He didn't even pillage. He's not an officer anymore. He's not an officer. Excuse me. This, he's not a person. But um, the guy that murdered the murderer, uh, one of the murderers. You know, if we didn't have that on tape. You know, the reason we're even seeing this mm-hmm. reaction yeah. is because it was on tape. Mm-hmm. At some point, things become so mm-hmm. undeniable. It's like you can't explain it. Well, we don't know what happened before the knee was on the neck. Like, you know what happened. Mm-hmm. Like, we don't know what happened before. Even asking that means that you believe this man deserved to die. Right. If that's the first instinct you have, you've been conditioned well, what did correctly. he do? Yeah. What did no, you wear? Did he... Was your skirt too short? George Floyd's skirt was definitely yeah. too short. So that's, you know, except he was murdered in Cuba. Uh, in front of all of us, and what my point was that uh, you know, if that wasn't on tape, would he have a holiday, hundred years from now? Mm. Such a good point. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, the, well, the potential of it is one hundred percent there, based on um, he might he could be a hero. You know. Yeah. To MAGA future yeah. people. Yeah. If that keeps devolving, he'll be a hero. He's a hero now. He's sure. a hero to now to people. MAGA people, I'm sure. But that's what it is. And if that doesn't say racism to you and it's still political, not to you personally, right. but to anybody that has a brain or is thinking, um, wow. Yeah. Can we show this fun clip of oh, Jane yes, Elliott? Please. Okay, so re- give us the top line on Jane, Jane Elliott for people who haven't heard of Jane Elliott. Do you know Jane Elliott, Macro? Tell, tell, tell us. I, yes, I forget. Tell, tell yeah, us I, about I, I was like, it bummed out like because like before this even happened there was somebody else was murdered on tape and i was like oh and i was hearing the same kind of language we're hearing and seeing now of like trying to butt people's dying like i know he died but Mm -hmm. or like i know they were murdered on camera but like that kind of stuff i was like i can't something's wrong and i found this lady jane elliott and her speeches and she started um doing this blue eye brown eye experiment uh i think the day after martin luther king was assassinated and She's a white school teacher. White school teacher from Iowa. Who was horrified by racism crushed. when Martin Luther King yeah, being crushed assassinated. Crushed when MLK was killed, and she decided to teach her kids. Uh, she was teaching her kids. They were having a whole diversity appreciation situation. It was February. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know it was in February. He was killed in April, but he was the hero right. in February. And so now she goes in and teaches these kids. She's like, I got to teach them what it's like to be a person of color. And so she has this appearance. These are kids now. She has this experiment where she takes a kids with brown eyes and makes them superior for a couple hours. So and takes the blue ki- blue eyed kids out of the room for a couple hours and tells all the brown eyed kids, you gotta treat them like they're worse than you. Treat them, just laugh at them, they're dumb. Matter of fact, we're gonna create it so that you know stuff now. When they come back in, they, it won't, it'll make it impossible for them to catch up because they won't have the information. Just a very microcosm of what it's like, color in America. Um, legendary experiment, should, these kids turned into horrible entities. I'm not going to call them animals or savages. I'm not going to stoop to the MAGA level here, but they were that. Um, She, after that, continued to do this experiment with adults and to see over every, I think, decade since 1968, Mm -hmm. nothing has changed. Kids, they, they react. They, they just devolve. White, white girls, like white teenage or like college age girls, just like, just crying because this woman got in their face for like 90 seconds and kind of said like, well, basically just telling them like, well, you're as a blue eyed person, not as yes. smart as the brown eyed people, like yes. literally for like 90 seconds and just like that, yeah. hinted that they were less than and then created they just can't, an environment they psychologically where they could feel break. like they were less than and you could see it short and they're on camera. They know they're on camera. They sign up. They sign up. They say and on the contract that says you, your emotions might get pushed a little bit and they courageously they think they're confident they're like oh i'm gonna my emotions i'm fine i'm like above this everything's great they break like this they break and every time every time they break and i I know she's sick of it jane brings the energy she was just on fallon the other night if you go to my facebook page uh i posted a bunch of links of the experiment she did and um some of her appearances on oprah on fallon just like two nights ago and um, I mean Jimmy Fallon, but oh. the inter- I mean I can't. But the the interview is good. But uh, we were watching. She was on Oprah in 1992, yep. the year of the LA riots, and um, 
and I just had to pull this little clip because I thought it was so like chef's kiss, just like chef's exactly kiss. the way <laughs> that it feels when you're trying to engage with a white person who wants to be in denial of their racism um, and how they just respond in this like bizarre comical if it wasn't so horrifying immaturity because they just don't have the tools and so basically the context is Jane was on Oprah along with some guests who were brought on because they are racist like for instance this guy she's going to interact with was has a daughter who's in an interracial relationship and he doesn't condone it and this is uh, Jane making a little comment. That's the problem you're having the trouble you're having with your daughter. Because you have those green eyes and you aren't as smart as brown eyed people. <laughs> now, now, watch this boy's reaction. He goes, excuse me, do you think he's a little angry? Yeah. That fast. What, what you they, see, what white folks are very, uh, white folks are, are really, are than the really super sensitive. I want to post that on every comment forever. Like when I see people engaging on comment chains who are just like Trump supporters, I'm like white people are so sensitive. Awesome. White people are so. He did this. <laughs> who does that? Was, um, was was Jane also the one who did the? I'm trying to remember the uh, like asking a crowd of people, like white people in an audience, to uh to say question one. Do you think that there's a racism problem in America or something like that? Have you seen this clip no. and then no one's uh it might and be then her. no like people raise their hands like or something like it that? Might be her. And then and then are you racist and none of them raise their hands? And then it's something like, Okay, now raise your hand if you'd like to be if you personally would like to be treated like a black person in America. And no one raises their hands. And no one raises Ooh. their hands. And it's like and it's Free like I I it, I don't know if it was Jane, but it was yeah. another um older uh school teacher and i can't I, i'll see if Sounds i can find like the clip later yeah. but i love jane elliott yeah. just like you were saying like she just doesn't have time she's like i've been doing uh, this since the day after martin luther king was assassinated i no yes. longer have time for white people to cry about being in this experiment treated poorly for two yeah. hours jamie jamie uh in the chat oh. says it was her it was her yes yeah Yes. Shout out to James, shout out to Kelly. Wait, I want to show you some. Okay, so for anyone who's here, uh, I did prep. I mean, I, this is very just like train of thought and definitely please. My dad's the only one who asked a question or uh, made a comment so far about like wanting to talk about something. So we're going to talk about that. If you guys want to talk about specific things, type them in the chat. If you just want to say like, hey, I saw this on my Facebook and I just need to vent about it with other people who are sane, um, drop it in the chat. But um, I do want you to know, after we answer my dad's question, I did prep some cathartic clips for us that we're going to watch. Yeah. That are, I mean, they're cathartic and they're going to make you angry, but they're going to be cathartic <laughs> in the way that it just is like, yes, I know I'm not crazy. Because yeah. I think a big part of what's going on right that we always talk about is the gaslighting mm. of like the, the Trump people and racist people, which are synonymous of just the like... There's two sides, and then, you know it's not that's not going on, and you know the gas side of it. So it's really, I think, um, satisfying to watch some clips that are just like, yeah, no, we we're reconfirming that we're not crazy. Not so we're gonna watch some exciting clips. But first, my dad asked about 30 minutes ago. I can't believe I'm talking for 30 minutes already. Um, what we thought of Obama. Uh, words today. What are your thoughts, Dash? I mean, I, he's it's completely obviously systemic change is absolutely what we need because supremacy was built on systems. Yep. This is systemic racism. Like That's we're what we're talking finding. About it, yep. um, it is taught to us. Change. I think I appreciate, you know, Obama is forever the op optimist and I, and I appreciate that about him. I don't know, you know, we're, we're yelling Black Lives Matter and, you know, to tell us your lives matter, your dreams matter, and then have you know the media pull that up and be like, this is that, and it's like, it, but they don't matter. Yeah. Like, they don't matter, and I just saw a video last week of a man getting murdered by the police right. that are supposed to protect us, and I'm pretty sure if they mattered, cops right. wouldn't be able to walk around after murdering a man for a week 
on tape. Or on two camera. guns with Ahmad or two guns with Ahmad Still Audrey, now three with cops Breonna that are arrested Taylor. for Breonna Taylor right. after murdering her in her sleep. It's like right. I don't I'm not sure how can they right. matter. I don't right. the, the cognitive right. dissonance the rub is too too deep. On the other side of that, agree. Um and I was saying to you when we watched it earlier, first of all, it was amazing that you pointed out, I didn't even realize it was CNN, like, just showing, like, a, a video of Obama. Like, I thought Obama's on CNN. They're like, no, like, it just, CNN was just like, please, we're just going to step away while you watch this video of Obama because no one can. Wait, wasn't like, it live, though? Yeah, it was just live on, like, YouTube. Like, I thought it was, like, on YouTube. Like, YouTube, CNN, because I watched it. I watched it I live. I attached that they, they were just, like, were showing, like, uh, like him on YouTube or something. Like, no, it, it was, was pretty... But it was the live so... link from whatever, like, YouTube. Like, oh, right, was, right, right, I was right, on YouTube, okay, and right, I looked right. up on CNN. I was like, they're just It airing. was a Zoom call on CNN's Zoom YouTube. Zoom call. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. That, also, I'm misinformed. I thought you meant that they were just like, oh, my God, Obama posted it. Let's just watch it. Like, and please, Obama is here. Save us. Which I... Save us, Obama, please, God. Two thoughts on the Obama thing. One, uh, on, on the thing today. Um, one, I understand it's a Zoom call, but I did notice, this is, this is the minor criticism, but like we've been streaming from living rooms for quite some time. Obama was like here in the frame. <laughs> and I was like, just better, someone get in there and move the laptop screen. But it, it didn't matter. It didn't matter because, because uh, I, it made me really hopeful and then really sad. Yes. Yeah, um, that that, you know, you're listening to, and look, Obama didn't say anything today earth shatteringly new. But compared uh, to the things he, Trump is saying, it sure was. I, and re- well, but no, but, but no, this is, this is, this is sort of my point. Like, and, 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 but even, even so, I got sad because I saw sort of the power of the way that speech is worded. Yeah. And, and, even with something that it was nothing ground shaking, nothing terribly new, but to have the reassurances of a belief in a person of, of authority that you that you can sort of be like, there's an adult in the room. Okay. Mm-hmm. And and honestly, that can granted, it's not fixing the racism, no, but-, but it's it's also not fueling the racism and just the way like that's what i said to tash when we were watching just even though we all know how incompetent evil just like on another level of the opposite of humanity donald trump is you still even the most critically thinking aware amongst us when when he's the president every day for four years it does become normalized even to i want to believe that i haven't accepted it as like normalized but then when you see obama just do the short zoom call and he has an actual he's thanking the protesters and then right there being like and here's our action we should take from the you know police force here's the here's the actions we can take and you're just like oh my god mm. i forgot what it was like <laughs> you know what i mean it, it made me realize how in the ways i have been even though i don't want to believe it's true just like all the and people who don't want to believe they're racist or, including myself including anyone you know again racism is indoctrinated in, in, into all of us it's and on just, the same day on the same day as um, Lindsey Graham and his new Hitler Youth uh, hair dye club uh, image now. I don't know if you've seen Lindsey Graham's oh, hair. Wow. He has Trump hair now. Are you serious? It's weird. Um, he's uh, leading the investigation into Obamagate. <laughs> On the, in the Senate. Uh, which which yeah. controversy that he wasn't born here? But this is the thing I'm saying is this is this is the guy that's asking for this investigation is is based is he ran based on racism and to say that well the economy is good like there's no excuses anymore like the economy wasn't you know why the economy yeah this is all you know why the economy is good (laughs) it was Obama (laughs) well that's the the constant he doesn't deserve the credit sir do we think I want to show a couple clips do we though think before we do that just as a pile onto that do we think this will ultimately help or harm 
Donald Trump and being elected for another four torturous, inhumane years. Is this is this rallying his base, or is this yes. finally? Because I will say, I have seen friends on Facebook who either I never saw post anything one way or another, or it was always like vaguely that was kind of, I don't know what's happening there. You probably voted for Trump. Now posting, which I, you know, you love, you love to see it, that like it took this to make you realize Donald, Donald Trump is a, a psychopath, but like somehow this did click it for them and they're like, hmm. I can't do it. But that is my personal small bubble of anyone I'm connected to on Facebook, what I have seen. I have this, uh, just to put that in frame, because that's very powerful. Um, you know, it took them the third innocent black person to get right. murdered right. on camera. Exactly. With a cop kneeling on their neck after grabbing by the, after... Mexicans are rapists. Mm -hmm. After at some Stormy point, Daniels. After Stormy Daniels, at, if they're Christians, what were they doing? You know, at some well, point, that's, that's at some whole, point, yeah. it's like, exactly. well, if this is the point, what were you really thinking the whole time? And how deep was? Absolutely. How deep does that supremacy? How how does that run? How mm -hmm. deep does that run inside of you that all of the rest of it was okay? Mm -hmm. Is my thing. Of course. Yeah, of course. Um, I think it's it strengthens his base, but I also think his base is oddly smaller than. Not to say that the, the racism is not small. I'm saying the people that currently believe in Donald Trump. I mean, again, I you know we go back to 2016, right? Mm. Lost a popular vote by uh, two million, three million, whatever it was, votes, and it was the electoral college that sort of did the whole the whole deed. Um, the, 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 the majority of the population was never with Trump. They were the loudest. And what this has done is what, what all of these bumbling, idiotic to master, well, not I don't say masterfully, like again, bumblingly evil things that sort of have happened in the, in the time since then has chipped away at those people. Yeah. Now, I, then we have the sort of the, the camp of folks that are like, well, if they're, you know, if they're now like, oh, I didn't get it, you know, whatever, you know, uh, now I understand and, you know, he's bad and wrong and it's not good for the country. Sort of like letting those people off. And I don't think that's a good move either. I think this goes back to what we were talking about originally, which is understanding that you can be wrong. Mm -hmm. But you don't have you, you do not get to officially be absolved of being wrong. You have to learn to live with the fact that you were wrong. Right. Yes. Yeah. And that's not to say that you can't do good works or try to. Yes. Uh, I mean, it's for lack of a better, point. I don't have a better non-religious word, but repent like there's. But like you have to own it. We all have to own I, I, Again, I can speak to a, 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 a cis white male. Uh, we have to own the biases and privileges that we uh, that we all have intrinsically, be it nature or nurture. Yes. And that also means that when we are wrong about something, we have to admit that we are wrong about something and also understand that just by admitting I was wrong about something that does not take away criticism of the thing that I was originally wrong about. Exactly. Like that's just, I love that. that's how it and, works. And, yes. and, and people, I think people get it a little bit twisted. That's in a that, really good point. It regard. goes back to the whole, you know, I think what I was touching on a little bit at the beginning is all, we, we as white people can't be silent because we're afraid of being criticized because we don't say the exact right thing or, you know, there's no more time to be defensive. Our egos can't be more important than human lives, right? Like we can't, we have to, the only way we will move forward is if we say things so that we can be corrected so that yeah. then we know and then exactly like you said that doesn't absolve us it's not everybody and it's part of all and you can speak to it more than i because i still i just downloaded white fragility and white rage and you know we that's at the core of our whiteness is like the the root like we it shakes us to our core to like be could i be a bad person 
<laughs> or could I be wrong? Well, yeah, you could be, and then that, and then just keep it moving. And like that, you know, I, I feel like that fear is instilled, and that social, you know, that social conditioning is instilled so that you do are too, our people are too scared to then have the conversation so that we continue the systemic racism. Exactly, that changes. it's part it's of the power, design of it. It's a powerful tool. It's part of the design but of it. I, was yes. gonna, I appreciate because just piggyback on what Cole said, like you know, I think one of the heart, the heart, most hurtful parts about this is not only seeing the destruction of human lives in front of your face but that people don't hold themselves accountable. Exactly. That, to me, is... Because to hold themselves accountable would be to admit, I have a fault, I did have a view that was hurtful, I do have a bias, I do... People are looking for acknowledgement. We just want to, like, just acknowledgement. Like, it was wrong, and Mm -hmm. he was murdered, and it was bad, and here's justice, the way justice works for everybody else. No, but then white people would have to admit that they contributed to it and internalize that guilt (laughs) and and live with it. And hold on a second. I think we have um, uh, a a comment, uh, someone standing by. Let's go to Miranda Hobbs. Miranda Hobbs? (laughs) Miranda Hobbs, yes? Would you like to comment? Okay, uh, Miranda Hobbs has fallen asleep, I think. Okay, back to you, Jim. Interestingly enough, uh, Tom, Tom's brain in the chat. Yes, love uh, Tom. Shout was saying, to Tom. Was, um, was saying that based on uh, the fact that he, uh, a Brit, uh, doesn't know the Democratic's candidate's name and therefore is worried about Ooh, November. Oh, yes, um, Tom is across I mean, listen, the pond. And, and yes. Thank you for that. And I'm not going to defend the fact that Joe Biden's campaign has all the energy of Miranda Hobbs right now. <laughs> Um, but, uh, I do, I do think, uh, again, that's kind of why I I use the Democrat sort of thing, because like, there's, we have no heroes on our ticket right now, but they at least are human beings who are not. Is, is the side of this, is the political wing that I vote under a card under of this entire thing, either, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, either ineffectual or lying because it's one. Right. And we should figure that out. And maybe, I mean, we, we, with a lot of different of the candidates before we landed on Joe Biden, um, I just, I just find a lot of different ways in, in this current sort of two party structure, we shoot ourselves in the foot to make sort of actual meaningful change. Sorry, just Tash, what was that? I feel like every person should vote like, they are a black person voting for their survival of their lives. So there we like, go. go down the ticket and there just be go. like, which one of these choices is more likely to appoint people that will murder me and my people than the other? And that's simply how black people have been voting since 1965, since we got the right to vote. And once that's white it. people start doing that on behalf of people of color, we will see systematic racism begin to change. If they don't do that yeah. and they continue to protect like again <laughs> there is no two sides this is and that's why we're in such a clear and blatant moment there yeah. is no two sides to racism there's yeah. no two sides to murder like yeah. you're either for, and i listen joe biden could take a poop on the floor and eat it but i'd be like you're not wearing a clan hood great here's my vote <laughs> thanks sir appreciate yeah. that you know what i mean like that's that's it for me i don't ineffectual because then yeah Sure. Also, Tom is saying, that's it. <laughs> Joe, I was thinking John something. <laughs> uh, John <laughs> Friday. Tom, all we need is the last name, bro. We have, uh, I promise I'm going to play those exciting clips, I promise you. We have a question from Kelly that I think is really important. She was, Kelly was wondering um, if about your experiences with law enforcement in New York City, which you shared... Oh, yeah. I mean, I will share whatever you would or wouldn't like to share right now. You shared a great story well, that was earlier. Just, that was a, a horrific story, but great to hear yeah. it from you because I think anytime you hear that was when someone's I was, personal story, it's very powerful. Well, it's the only memory I have from like that year of being a kid, which is messed up. But like, I was in Virginia Beach. My family, my grandmother, and my mother is from Virginia Beach, so we grew up going there every summer. And it's not the most progressive place, obviously. And we go to Virginia Beach to go swimming. And I remember, what I remember, I remember having my floaties on. This is not New York, but this is my first experience of law enforcement. I have my floaties on, I'm in the back left seat. And I have brain damage, this is very impressive, I can remember this. But, uh, and you know, we're just looking for parking. And the cop 
and there's no white shirt. It's like, you, ni- you niggers need to find somewhere else to go, or get out of here. And I didn't know what that meant. I knew what it meant because I could feel what it felt like. And that was my first, first being addressed by a police officer in floaties. I don't know how, maybe I was a threatening. Um, so screw that. Uh, and then just growing up in the city, just straight fear. I grew up in the 90s under Giuliani, so we knew what it was. You know, like, yeah. It wasn't going to be good um, if you had an interaction. I was taught since I was young to be careful, especially in New York. We didn't see the thing in Virginia coming because my parents knew. I was, you go to the beach, you go back home. I wasn't allowed to take walks. I wasn't allowed to do those things because they wanted me to live. So my experience with law enforcement as a black person is the same as every other black person's as you grow up as a kid and they always have to have a conversation with you about you could get killed. Now, my problem with the bad apple argument is if that was a bad apple argument, then why is every child having to have this conversation? Yeah. Every single one. I've never met a black person that's never had that conversation. Yeah. All over the world. Yeah. And not just in uh, the States. But yeah, um, honestly, because of my, my fear has kept me out of trouble. So I guess good. If that's good experience with law enforcement, then yeah, great. You know? yeah. I'm alive. That's, that's what I consider good. Yeah. But I'm glad they, I'm, I felt, also, that, well, this is my experience with law enforcement. They put yeah. a curfew out when people are protesting the fact that a man was murdered on camera. Yeah. The first time in my life we've had a curfew in New York City. We didn't have a curfew when 9-11 happened. And it happens because people are upset that a person was murdered on camera by other police officers. So the answer is to send more police officers for more police brutality and yeah. arrest 4,000 people across this country while three cops are walking around that committed murder are free, to me that says everything I need to know about how they see my life. Yep. And if it doesn't, I'd love, I'd love to hear why. But right. that's my experience. The structure of a lot of the ways that uh, many cities, uh, again, I was just on a show talking about the Seattle protests, so this is something that um, that I sort Does of learned Zoe about over there. Does Zoe want to chime in? I thought I heard her. The uh, well, she's already doing it. It's, <laughs> there's no choice. Um, but, uh, I mean, the, the, the way that a lot of these protests have been handled uh, is a, a term that I just learned called kettling, mm. um, which is basically maneuvering peaceful protests into spaces based on cordoning off areas and trying to do things to basically make it uh, uh, kettling like a kettle boiling yeah. over so to, so to speak yeah. uh, so that then when a curfew hits yeah, it, there's no direct line we out. That That's TV. all the videos I'm seeing. That's all the videos yeah. I'm seeing on the internet. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and and, not letting people um, off bridges, and, not letting like it's yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of that, and that is a a coordinated effort. That's not an accident. It's made to make it's made to escalate. So and I, and, and this is what I'm trying to figure out the ex- ex- Escalate exactly. in and of itself. Yeah. Exists to criminalize you for being outside. Mm-hmm. The, the, yeah, and the curfew also exists because uh, despite the fact that there are a billion law enforcement agents in uh, in uh, New York City, the fact of the matter is there's more people. And if you've got to get into a waiting game of who can stay awake the longest based on numbers, uh, there's a whole thing about that. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's a ton of cops, there's a ton of people, and if there's more, like, there's that sort of aspect of it where they can't just be out there all the time because if they are and it gets to a point like that, they'll lose. Yeah. Like, there's, but the... But here, that's where we are. I don't know if that's bad. They're murdering people. No, 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 I'm not saying it's, I'm saying, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm saying that's the, that's the reason why the curfew exists is to keep the advantage oh, I feel you. Right. Yes. Right. on their side. Do you get yes. what I'm saying? Like, um, and, and so the end game of this in my, in my humble, barely educated on an opinion is so that the narrative of violent protests can continue and they hope that uh, the other, the, I'll just say the other, the people not protesting and not speaking out and not learning and not donating and not signing petitions and calling their representatives, that they'll get so sick of it and or scared mm-hmm. that the public opinion will sway and they can use more force to end it. Yes. And that's, that so far has 
like that's the goal I, that's the only end game i can see them thinking the problem with even that end game is historically even if that wins in the short term it's not winning in the long term uh. and i don't understand why that i mean again you know why <laughs> racism like <laughs> it does boil back because it goes beyond logic right it does beyond like, logic it, it, and it goes back to the six they've been doing the fbi colon telepro they've been doing this since the civil rights oh my god we didn't even get we have so much to get to guys I literally like everything, which I'm glad. That's what I thought. I literally said to Matt Carl before we started this. I'm like, you know, if we talk about one one thing the whole time, that's great. But you know, we'll have lots of places, different like thought starters we can go to. And of course, it's like ten minutes till about to get cut off. And I had it's like all my I had this whole knowledge I was gonna drop on you about uh, uh, Fred Hampton and uh, J Edgar Hoover. You know. Uh, making racism be a part of our society. Okay, listen, before we get cut off, which we will in about like 10 minutes, and listen, I know you probably have to go crawl to do your podcast. Maybe if we'll come back yep. up if we're still in the middle of stuff, everybody. So if you guys want to stick around, Tasha and I will talk about lo longer. Instagram cuts us off at like 10, 10 05. We'll come back. But we just, let's just uh, round things out with some cathartic clips, shall we? So we were talking about the protests. Obviously, most of them are peaceful, and that's the thing you don't see in the news, right? I mean, like, where is my little... Oh, did I not bring the clip? In? Yeah, the narrative that, you know, the government wants us to see and that some of you wants us to see is that everyone's rioting and looting, and it's all a disaster. Obviously, most of them are peaceful protests. Second, then two-pronged after that is, number one, a lot of the rioting is being done by people who want to cause trouble exhibit a this police officer instructing a white girl what she should graffiti and telling the white girl to write floyd let's take a look at that So the narrative is, did you hear? She's did damaging you, property. Did, and we couldn't, can't hear the clip, so did you hear that, Matt Carl? Literally, the oh, yeah, police yeah, yeah. officer tells her to write Floyd. So I'm kind of like burning through all these things that I, ha I thought we could have more of a discussion on, but since we're getting towards the end. But number one, most of the protests are peaceful. Number two, most of the instructions being even aided and embedded by the police officer is that everybody, your like racist auntie, is so concerned that we're painting, you know, all police officers with the, and not that there are obviously, yes, we shouldn't do that. But I don't see that in the news. I don't see well, in the news about how police officers are telling white girls to graffiti George Floyd on a wall. But then those are two like the small prongs of just what you can tell your like racist uncle when he's like can't he's more upset about rooting and rooting and lighting rioting and looting than he is about yeah, black people being murdered so if you want to show t your racist uncle some articles i'll post them i've already posted them on facebook i'll put a link in my instagram but rioting and looting is literally how this country we're but we have holidays america was built on rioting and looting what are we and historically, again, I had like all these little quotes I was gonna like in articles I was gonna direct to you to. I'll point, I'll put them on Facebook. But like, historically, I do have to read this one quote that I thought was very, very lovely um, in an article by Kelly Carter. No, I'm gonna read you the Vicky Osterwein from the New Enquiry. Um, the Miss. Mystifying ideological claim that looting is violent and non-political is what has been carefully produced by the ruling class because it's precisely the violent maintenance uh, of property, which is both the basis and end of their power. Looting is extremely dangerous to the rich and mostly white people because it reveals with an immediacy that has to be moralized away that the idea of private property is just that an idea. In a space without cops, well, yeah. property and relations can be destroyed and things can be had for free. Also, Kelly Carter Jackson, The Atlantic, The American Revolution was one with violence! I had to scream it. Well, yeah, I mean, y y the one what, thing what they did teach us in, about in, in ye old uh, New Hampshire uh, middle school was about the Boston Tea yeah. Party. 
They right? They managed to teach you guys that in the New England situations over there. Yeah. I know. But but that's because, the Boston, oh, no, 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 no. Selena Copic is watching. Yeah, Boston Tea Party is a good exa- great example. That And the reason Everyone's they so taught it was it. because of, it, and it's kind of an interesting thing, because not to say that um, the British rule was, I mean, there's a reason why America broke off from British rule. That's not what I'm sort of talking about. But it's interesting how when the narrative shifts to a group of predominantly, well, for, I mean, leadership wise, white people uh, being, having their rights infringed upon, <gasps> what might they do? Can you imagine? Literally, dumb. It's so funny because you hear about the Boston Tea Party, and it kind of seems silly. It's kind of like, oh, they threw the tea in the ocean, like to show them a lesson. That was like two million and some change of fucking tea. Like (laughs) it was, it like that's the Boston Tea Party's new tagline. It's it's insane how much like monetary value that did. That is a form (laughs) of. Of essentially, and again, y- y- people get it sort of twisted about like the, um, oh, well, they're destroying it and not stealing it. And I'm just like, fuck you. Well, and, well, <laughs> well that's everybody wants, I had someone wow. comment on when I reposted that my friend Selena posted about how like being from Boston, everyone's very proud of the Boston Tea Party as like this amazing for a protest. But of course, you know, the rioting, the looting to stand up for racial injustice and the murder of black people is somehow like, oh, just just. Oh, these people, they're, they're like savages, savages. They're savages. They're animals. But and then someone commented like, mm, to be precise, that's not an exact analogy. The but you get the fucking point. I'm sorry. Like, you know, like, that's the best. we're making analogies here. They're imperfect. Can we just all get on board? And I think well, I put it on my Facebook page. I don't have it pulled up exactly, but it was another article in the Atlantic that, you know, the quote was something to the effect of like, what and the, again you see like your uncles and your your aunts on facebook like what well, what about like if they just i i get the with the protesting and i'm for it but like the rioting the looting and the violence and the quote from the atlantic is something to the effect of like you know in the past black people to be treated equally and not murdered in the street by law enforcement have peacefully protested boycotted and rioted and done this and done that and the other. And the one common fact is that white supremacy will allow none of them. You know, it's <laughs> that's like, the one constant that's thing the that. one it's common the thread. Go ahead, Aunt Karen, let us know how sad you are about Target. <laughs> also, you know? let's be very clear. Uh, it's not just people's aunts and uncles, it's it's parents and, 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 and children and siblings <laughs> and friends. I don't know, aunt and uncle Everyone. just sounds good. Like everyone has I a know, racist aunt uncle, uncle just, you, know you know what it, Put the whole thing on that familial branch. <laughs> okay, wait. I really want to show these clips, but Instagram's about to cut us off. We have 12 people watching. Instagram's going to cut us off, but we want to talk like maybe 10 or 15 more minutes. Will you 12 people um, commit to donating to Black Lives Matter and uh, Color for Change and, uh, you know, Minnesota also Freedom Fund and all those funds. things? And also come back. That's what commit to uh, donating a bail funds and donating to things, but also will you commit to, I'm gonna go down and then go down, meaning go off live, just so, because we're about to get cut off, but then we're gonna count, say the alphabet and we're gonna be back live again. Will you come back? Because I have clips uh, juxtaposing some really interesting ways the media portray white people being upset about things versus uh, fighting for racial justice. So, uh, Matt Crawl, you're gonna leave us, right? I do have okay, to go because I have another your podcast. Re- I have my third show. <laughs> I love you. Okay, so anyone who was here before, uh, we did the show. Instagram cuts us off at an hour. Um, so now we went down, we're back up again, and we were having a really great conversation with Matt Kral, who was on Skype, who had to bounce to do another podcast. I'm here with Tash Neal, who I hope wants to be here, but is also forced to be here because he lives here. Um, and we're talking about racism and white supremacy in America and how it's indoctrinated into us and how um, in the world right now, a lot of people on your Facebook feed and my Facebook feed are more upset about, you know, their local CVS being looted than they are about watching an execution of a black man in a street and also um, hundreds of years of racism. 
So that's where we're at. So if you missed that conversation, we can unpack it some more in a little bit. Call me. We'll have a personal conversation about it. But that's kind of what we've been unpacking. We've been talking a little bit in, I guess I kind of uh, set this show up and asked people to tune in as we were going to sort of give like, if you know, you're a friend who doesn't want to believe they're racist, but really is, and just thinks that she isn't racist because she doesn't wear the Klan hood, but doesn't understand all the, here, I'll put up this little infographic, doesn't understand all the, um, you know, other ways below the line there, covert white supremacy, that she is racist and she gets very defensive, here are some ways you can talk to her. I think we didn't do that explicitly, but I think we did it like a little bit implicitly is that the word yeah for sure i don't know english um all right so we got some people back this is great hi to everybody so okay (laughs) so i forced everyone to come back because i really wanted this uh show this week to be kind of just a very open forum but i did take some time to pull some specific clips and i am forced i forced you to come back i appreciate you going along with that because i had these clips here and i want to make you watch them okay um how are you feeling? Great. Are you feeling great? No, I'm okay. I, it's really hot in here, and I mean, you're wearing long sleeves and pants. So that's why I'm like, and I'm wearing like I overdressed. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're never overdressed for what a delight. All right, so we've been talking a lot, a little bit on the heels of when we left off, and you know, my crawl brought up, um, and like I say, we're talking about people being. A, a big focus, it seems right now, with people that you see in your social media feed or in your in your life, is there. I get. I'm with the. I'm. I'm not a racist. Like I'm with it. I don't want black people to be murdered, but look at these savages. And I mean, I shop at that key food. Why are you looting it? <laughs> So that's really narrow. Even though most of the protests, like we showed right before you guys uh, left, most of the protests are peaceful, but the narrative is focused. It seems everybody's hang up is on the the rioting and looting, which we also talked about why rioting and looting is a perfectly viable, wonderful form of protest. So if you missed that, DM me about it. Um, But we were talking a lot about how, uh, you know, we've seen people posting, Jordan Carlos had a great tweet about like, so listen guys, white people just don't really understand looting and rioting unless it's like to celebrate one of their sports teams. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I just want to judge. Well, first of all, let's start with it. Let's actually start by showing um, some footage of the protests. Okay. So here, here's some, here's some protest footage. We're going to do some juxtaposition. Here we go. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that, I made a mistake. That wasn't protest footage. That wasn't people protesting for racial justice. That was actually um, after the Philadelphia Eagles won the Super Bowl. <laughs> that was riding in the streets when the Philadelphia Eagles won the Super Bowl. I'm sorry, that was my mistake. Let's keep watching, though, and let's actually, let's actually watch how Good Morning America covered people riding in the streets after the Eagles mm. won the Super Bowl. Should we watch that? Let's take a look. We saw, though, there are thousands of fans who flooded Philly streets overnight. Some of those celebrations getting rowdy. I don't know what you would expect <laughs> other than that. But Gio Benitez, he is there. And Gio, these fans were very excited about their first Super Bowl win in Philly. They were, Michael. Good morning to you. Listen, I got here at 1 a.m. It felt like the party was just getting started here in Philadelphia. We have video of this. Uh, People climbed on top of the awning, and that awning actually collapsed. So they got uh, some injuries there. You see that collapse right there. So you had some injuries. Thankfully, no deaths. But back out here live in Philadelphia, you can see how proud people are. Fly, Eagles, fly. The city is proud. They're proud. You guys, things just got a little rowdy. (laughs) <laughs> things just got a little rowdy they're very they're very pr- look at these proud sports fans look look at how they're so proud that there's broken glass ever look just a little just a little hometown pride <laughs> just some good old-fashioned rowdy sports friends what else do you expect oh my god so and just to be clear also this is looting like you just saw this in the clip this was on good morning america they framed it as rowdy sports fans just being proud celebrating 
this is literally looting a convenience store. Okay, so just to be clear, and I don't even, th I mean, I didn't even bother to pull any like juxtaposition things of the protest because we've seen the way it's portrayed and the way, and, and I, I think it's even more important, not only is the media portraying it in, you know, it's like so, uh, you know, they're violent thugs. I mean, our president called the protesters yep. thugs. And your aunt on Facebook is definitely not, you know, your aunt on Facebook was, I'm sure, really excited when the Eagles won and thought it was adorable. Then why does she, why is she horrified that Target, hmm. who has insurance and will be fine, and literally if Target, I saw Sean King post this, which was an amazing point, if Target said, hey, uh, everyone, the police commissioners of every state, here's a bunch of money. I'd love for racism to end. People would be like, okay. Like, <laughs> Target could end this if they wanted to. No, I'm, I'm not worried about Target. I'm worried about actual humans uh, dying. We have empathy. Listen, do you, I, have, I have more, because let's, okay, let's, Let's show an actual clip of the protests, actually. Hold on. Here's an actual clip of the protests. Kidding me. The police moved in aggressively. A non I'm sorry. That was a mistake again. That was, <laughs> that was students rioting after Joe Paterno was fired uh, for being complicit in covering up wow. uh, his co-worker, Sandusky, raping young boys. Uh, I remember that. So uh. that was what was happening. Let's actually, actually guys, I'm going to do something too, because me and Tash can't hear right now the clips, but we have no one on Skype. So I actually feel like, okay, I think, let me see if, can, are we echoing right now, you guys? Will you guys tell us in the comments if we're echoing? And I'm going to play something to see if we can hear clips now. No, we're still not going to be able to hear them, so I'll just turn it off. Sorry, Tash, we're not going to be able to hear things. It's very sad, but I know what the clips are, so I can just tell you. Okay. Um, so that was <laughs> students protesting Joe Paterno covering up the rape of young boys. Uh, so let's, let's, uh, let's unpack this. Let's unpack this just a little bit. Here we go. Hold on. Let me, let me play. Let me show you uh, ABC News clip. I believe it's Diane Sawyer covering this. Here we go. There is a request for calm on the campus of Penn State after loyal students erupted in outrage over the firing of Joe Paterno, their legendary football coach, who, by the way, was fired over the phone after 45 years at the helm. The cause, that sexual abuse scandal involving eight young boys and one of Paterno's top coaches. Sorry, we're watching it on here on delay since we can't watch. And he was just, you know, loyal loyal students loyal students that's a compliment is loyal you know just just showing their loyalty wow. and uh and listen by the way joe paterno these riots are warranted because joe paterno was fired over the phone can you believe it listen was joe paterno was fired over the phone here's the right like they had to put that in the setup because it's it's okay it's okay when Penn State students are rioting because a football coach, I'm so sorry, my dad's watching. He's like Penn State all day. He was a big Paterno guy. But listen, he didn't do the right thing when young boys were being raped. And Diane Sawyer, that is Diane Sawyer, right? Yes. I'm a little bit drunk. She had to, in the setup, or whoever wrote her setup, had to make sure she justified the protest because Joe Paterno, a football coach at a university who covered up child rape, was fired over the phone. Mm -hmm. So it's fine. What's and, a little looting between friends? And they were loyal. Racial injustice, however, uh, it feels, does the CVS deserve it? I mean, it's just <laughs> racial injustice. It's not like a football coach was fired over the phone. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, all right, let's do one more, because this is my favorite. Oh, actually, this is just a little at uh, the end of the Paterno thing. Hold on, one more Paterno thing. They made him look like a freaking villain. Sure. You call him a legend, treat him like a legend. He says, they're making him like he's evil. If he's a legend, you got to treat him like a legend. I hope, uh, do you think that guy brought the same energy to George, George Floyd being murdered? For, no. Do you think that guy... 
really brought. Do you think if we went through his Facebook feed, oh, he'd uh, he'd bring that same energy that he brought to Joe Paterno being fired over the phone oh. to uh, racial injustice and Breonna Taylor and George Floyd and Ahmaud Arbery being murdered? You'd love to hope in humanity. <laughs> You'd love to hope for that. But we both know the answer to that one. My dad said he's logging off. He's just kidding. Um, okay. Before I let you guys go, I just want to show you um, really quickly. These are these are protesters. Wait, Tom, we're laughing. Tom just said, I love how I'm reading it, but you guys can also see it. If George Floyd had been murdered over the phone, I might have been framed better by the news. <laughs> Oh, Tom, we love you. Ooh, that's funny and true. It's like dark and real. Wait, actually, also, we can move over a little bit and be more even even in the frame. Okay, okay it's fine. Okay, listen, you guys. So this is the protesters uh, who are upset about not being able to get haircuts storming the, the Michigan Capitol building armed and how the police officers are interacting with them. These people are armed. Let's go. Oh, it's good. Oh, yay. Take, take, hey, give me an A. Here, here. Hey, bro. They're like, buddy, like literally in that first clip, they're like, oh, hey, but like they're practically saying like, oh, hey, buddy. Yeah. Those people are yelling. They're armed, mm -hmm. screaming in the cops' faces. And the cops are just like, this is fine. Shall we look at how the cops are treating the, the peaceful protesters? Sure. Protesting the murder of innocent black men? Sure. Let's go. Here you go. Peaceful protesting, hands up, chilling, signs. I love humanity. Oh, and then the, they just, ru that's interesting. They just rushed them. Okay. So they, wait, hold on. I'm confused. Peaceful, hands up, peaceful protesting, N not armed. So these people were not carrying weapons. Okay, okay. They were being peaceful. They were not screaming cops' faces. The cops rushed them. Had a lot of energy on this one. They had a lot more. See, this energy felt different oh, than right. this energy. Oh, yeah. really Do you feel like a little, a little bit? bit? It feels slightly different. Let's go to, I have like just one more example. Here's a, oh, look, that's a New York's finest. New York's finest, just um, a woman in the peaceful protest. Oh, look, he looked back because he wants to make sure. Ooh. There you go. Okay, yeah. That's definitely illegal. That's definitely not assault. Hmm. Yeah. But that woman was armed and, and dangerous and a threat. Yes. So she deserved to be pushed down that way. Oh, not yeah, unlike yeah. these oh, yeah. people the hey, the the who are totally fine and carrying. Wait, I didn't even show you the good ones of them carrying weapons. Here we go. Here we go. Wait for it. There you go. Yeah. Mm. But that guy's fine. They're chilling. It's this woman that she had to go down. Yeah, she had she to be done with. Fan. Oh, hell, let's just show a couple more. I like <laughs> let's just show a couple more. Yep, down. There we go. Trampled with a horse. Yeah. Oh, he pulled the mask down to pepper spray him. Okay. And then, of course, the classic driving over people. That's a good one. Because those people wanted racial justice. The haircuts. other people wanted. And they were armed. Haircuts. But they wanted haircuts. Yeah. Are you guys having fun yet? Let's wrap it up by just reminding everyone that um, the guy who murdered nine people at a historically black church um, got Burger King after mm -hmm. he was arrested. Peacefully arrested. Mm -hmm. And they, the cops bought him Burger King. Facts. Because look, he's just an adorable white boy. He's not a threat. No. He only murdered nine people. It's not like he murdered ten. <laughs> And he had just murdered them. Get so the man Burger King. He was hungry. He's very hungry. I oh, and that was a cop throwing up the white power sign, but I think you all saw that because I posted it. <laughs> Felt like, you know, ran through that a little quicker. I would have liked to let it breathe a little bit, but okay. I didn't want all those fun clips to be for naught. That's fun. It makes me feel better. Honestly. I feel good. <laughs> I mean, I feel bad, but I feel it's like cathartic I know, you're to watch that like, we're not crazy. Here's the proof, it's, and we're being yes. gaslit by when you, our white supremacist president. When you have it put up like that, and you have each, if you have them in such stark, uh, you know, you can see such stark differences in the footage, and it's so clear, and footage doesn't lie to you. Your yeah. eyes aren't lying to you. Right. And, um, but it does, just when I watch, you know, 
the headlines and it just says, you know, protests erupt. And uh, it's just like, you just see black people in a gathering and some violence is about to erupt. And it's like, it's not. Right. And, um, but you see these people looting and they're loyal fans. Loyal fans uh, just getting a little bit rowdy. They're rowdy, they're celebrating. They're it's having a celebration great time. when you cause millions of dollars in damage in right. the city. But if you're protesting racial justice, you might get pushed to the floor. Yeah. And like, I'm not going to say I knew that, but I knew that. But, and that's right. sad that kids have to grow up with that reality. And, but it's helpful because this is proof that, you know, you are being gaslit, you know, and, it, and what you're feeling is real. And when you see those um, headlines that are trying to make these people violent overall, they're trying to criminalize and weaponize peaceful protests. Yes, exactly. Uh, and, and make that the headline. Make that the headline. Mm -hmm. these, I just wish these protests would stop. I'm so tired of hearing about this and have an exhaustive uh, coverage and make it just the vi potential violence, potential danger when we have yeah. literal murder on camera in mm -hmm. front of us. Rather than talk about that, uh, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's beautiful. I love it. <sighs> Obama, help us! <laughs> Come back! Ooh, yes. All right, you guys. Um, wow. Thanks for coming back for everyone who came back to to, to uh, justify me taking the time to pull those clips. Tasha and I are also just going to watch them later yes. in our personal time. <laughs> we just like to cathartically torture ourselves with <sighs> clips of how horrible humanity is. Let's just go to Miranda Hobbs one more time to make sure she doesn't have any comments. Miranda, anything you'd like to add? Those toes. Wow. Wow. She's exhausted. Tanuki, any thoughts? No? All right. Wow. <laughs> you guys, thank you so much for, for joining us. I hope that was cathartic for people, or, you know, maybe. I assume no one learned anything. I feel like everyone tuning in is on the right side of humanity, but. Probably gave us some you clips know. to share. Maybe you just like, ha you know, heard a little something that one of us said that you're like, that's exactly what I'm going to say to my, you know, racist friend Susie who doesn't <laughs> believe she's racist but also believes that all lives matter. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Maybe you can go and take that to her. All right, you guys. We will, I don't know what we're going to do next week. I guess we'll do a show. I don't know. These are weird times. It's just, but hopefully this is maybe also, um, maybe this is one more uh what's a terrible analogy drop that will overflow the bucket nice maybe it's one more crack in the dam maybe this is yes. finally one first step towards something finally happening no something better all right you guys we'll see you next time i'm rachel maddow <laughs> love you guys